Hi, this is Jamie Boggs with Burning River Bushcraft. I'm going to be starting a series on survival firearms, and I'm going to be starting with my favorite. This is the Savage Model 24C. This is the original case for it. It's made by Black Sheep, is the, uh, the name on the, the case itself. Uh, very short, I believe it's 18 inches long, approximately. I would have to guess as the manufacturer time for this would probably have been in the 70s. Case folds in half and then ties with leather tongs. Uh, you can almost see this on the back of a horse. I think that was kind of the design with it. The material is like a plasticky leather. Uh, definitely not durable. It, this, I'm very, very careful with this case. I can see it, especially in leather like this. Uh, ripping or tearing pretty easy plus you know this thing is got to be close to 40 years old and the case itself has each half of the 24C the forend comes off with no tools Snaps into place. Okay, quick assembly. When you put this together, you have a full size firearm. Uh, the length of pull is maybe slightly shorter than the other uh, Savages. The 24C actually is an over and under uh, rifle barrel on top, shotgun barrel on the bottom. What is special about the 24C in particular is that it is a takedown model with the case. They all come apart, but traditionally the barrels are longer on these. Housed in the buttstock, there's a metal plate that slips away. There is a uh, two slots inside for 22 shells and another one that holds uh, 20 gauge. Mine holds one. It holds one with room to spare. I can't quite fit two in here, and I don't really want to route it out because this is a, uh, you know, I wouldn't say it's a rare firearm, but it's pretty collectible, and it's not something I need to route out right now. Maybe some of the other models actually will hold two shells, but this thing is just shy of holding two 20 gauge shells in the butt. And on the lower section with two holes I've got, it seems like it's five and five. So I've got 10. 22 long rifle shells and one 20 gauge shell stored in the butt stock. Now I do not have a butt cuff of any type on this. That would probably be a good addition, but when you start going to something like this, it no longer fits in the original case. The, the barrel release on this particular gun is on the front. Uh, Savage made over and under rifle shotgun combos for many years. And that's one thing you can see as the models progress through the years is the lever that actually drops the, the barrel gets moved around from spot to spot. I've seen it on the tang. I've seen the lever on the side of the receiver. This model, it's right in front of the trigger guard. Uh, this is plastic. It really doesn't fit in well with the, with the gun itself. Uh, it is the one thing that does not appear to be durable, but I've never had any problems with it. The selector is on top of the hammer so I can choose to fire the shotgun shell or the rifle shell uh, to if I was to fire the shotgun shell then I need the, the second barrel for an immediate follow-up I would have to manually throw that lever before I can shoot it it's got adjustable sights on it there is a rail uh, there's a uh, flutes on top of the barrel for a scope uh, this is must be its own proprietary scope mount. It's not like anything I've really seen before. Uh, I've seen a lot of used savages that have scope mounts on them already. So if you want to go that route, you could. But again, as soon as you start putting a scope on his, this, it no longer is going to fit in this two-piece case. Uh, it's a nice lightweight gun. Love the size. Love the weight of it. This was my, my main... Uh, trap line gun for a few years. 
I really like the fact that I have a true dedicated 22 long rifle. That's how almost how I viewed it. I had a single shot 22 long rifle. And then if I needed it, there was a 20 gauge right below me. There are not the 24C, not the camper model, which is what this is, but they do have this model also very similar. It's got a longer barrel that has a 410 on the bottom. They do never have made one that was a 12 gauge. The 12 gauge lower always had a center fire upper barrel. And I really like the fact that I could take a rim fire and you know use that for a trap line gun or uh, squirrel hunting is absolutely perfect with this gun. You know, you've got the classic sitting squirrel, you know, you can take a headshot on it. Um, anything running on the ground, uh, you know, it gets the shotgun barrel. When I carry this, I always carry it selected to the lower barrel, which is the shotgun. If I if something's I have a stationary target and I need a rifle, I have time to select the rifle the rifle barrel. If I'm you know walking through the brush and a rabbit breaks in front of me, I need a quick shot. I want that shotgun uh, as my first first option. The one thing I do not like about this is this barrel has no choke whatsoever. This is a true cylinder bore. So, I guess the advantage to that would be a bigger pattern. That probably was what they were thinking. But the problem is, it has such a big pattern that I can hit and roll rabbits on a pretty regular basis with this, but I generally don't kill them. I'll roll the rabbit, it'll stun it, and it'll get right up and take off again. Um, it does shoot slugs great, it patterns with buckshot great, but as far as uh, you know, shooting birds, rabbits, anything like that, it's really lacking with no choke. You know, you're cutting at least 10 yards off your hunting range because you don't have a choke with this. I have killed rabbits, I have killed squirrels, I have killed pheasant with this, but like I said, my range just shrinks up quite a bit because of the lack of a choke in the barrel. Now, 22 long rifle on top, everybody loves this for a you know, prototypical survival gun because of the light weight of it. I mean, you know, you can see the light shells, they were in the buttstock. I didn't, you can't even tell they're in there. The problem with a 22 long rifle for anything, even a medium sized game, so I'm going to say Groundhog Coon, but anything from, you know, Possum Down, I would say I'm good to go with the 22 long rifle. When I start going up in game size, now my shot placement becomes critical. And I just said that I do not want to put a scope on this particular gun, so I'm shooting iron sights. So, to, in order to hit, uh, you know, the brain, the head of a target, uh, approximately coon size, groundhog size, for me, I'm going to say comfortably is in the 25 to 35 yard range. You know, I can make 50 yard shots with this, but I can't do it on a regular basis. So, to make this a guaranteed hunting gun, this is a 25 and under to 35 and under. So that's putting you right back into the range of a bow. But this is a lot more sure thing. Uh, the skill level of the user is eliminated quite a bit with this particular fire. So here's a quick review of it. Let's get it over to the range and shoot it a little bit. So we're out here on the range today, the Savage 24C. I'll give you a close up here. Break action, no safety, no wind camera back, it is ready to fire. So, as much as I do like this gun, I'll go over some of the negative aspects to it. But first, in weather like this, single shots are great, single shots are reliable, but I have to take a small 22 shell and put it into a small barrel. So that's kind of hard to do, hard to manipulate when your hands are cold. You know, a shotgun, a single shot shotgun is a lot easier because you're putting a, you know, a sizable object that shows easier to hold and you're putting it in a bigger bullet. You know. This thing is pretty close to the action. 
another uh, disadvantage to it that I don't like is when you open up the finger nook here to open this slide. So when you open the butt plate to access your access your extra ammo, uh, it's hard to get a cartridge out without spilling all of it. You really kind of got to be cognizant of it, cupping your hands, and usually you throw the so that's definitely a negative. You notice when you open those shells, the cartridges do not eject. So this is an extractor, not an ejector. So I'm able to lift this out with my fingertips. Again, not the easiest thing to do when it's cold. The one advantage to it though is if you were trying to reload, especially the shotgun shell, uh, you aren't going to be fishing it out of the snow behind you. So you can just open the gun up and pull out your empty hole. Obviously the rim fire is not a reloadable, but the features are the same. If this was a center fire top barrel or the rim fire. So I've got a target. I've got a target of about 25 yards. Now I'm going to fire the shotgun. I've got the selector in the forward position. It's going to fire the bottom barrel. extracted again which is a good thing in this case because you're not littering the ground and I can utilize this and reload it let's go ahead and fire the rifle barrel so I have a single cartridge in right now I have a selector on the top barrel Even in this weather, it's quite difficult to pull that uh, small case out of the out of the barrel. about this firearm is the trigger. Uh, the trigger is not the best and that is the truth. Uh, the trigger pull is a little heavy on this. It is not gritty. Uh, it is a smooth trigger but the weight of the trigger is a little bit more than is optimum for a rifle like this. But other than that, you know it's a great firearm. sideways when I was shooting it. Uh, this gun is sighted in at 6 o'clock hold, so that's top of the post is going to be bottom of the black spot, and then it should hit the center. Uh, with, uh, with iron sights, I like a 6 o'clock hold a little more. That uh, lets me see what I'm actually hitting. If I'm trying to cover it up with a black post, uh, you know, I'm obscuring quite a bit of the target. But, I mean, I did get one in the black, 
and one like a quarter inch out and then this one is like three inches out you know not the greatest shooting not the greatest shooting uh, conditions but then here's the pattern you know I, I've got the, the whole targets covered however you know there are fist size holes in the pattern you know that is due to the fact that it's a cylinder bore so you're firing that shell and you're not really controlling the shot pattern at all you're just shoot, uh, throwing it down a tube you know any type of constriction from a choke that would tighten this pattern up and give me another at least 10 yards to this gun but it's uh you know you get an animal in the right spot of course it's dead but you can see why it's easy for something to escape a pattern like this with holes in it is my choice for the uh, best takedown survival firearm. You have the advantages of a shotgun and the advantages of a rifle all put together in one piece. Again, I'm not a fan of a 410. Uh, the 20 gauge uh, is a step up in my opinion. Uh, I would prefer a 12 gauge, but this is what I've got. So despite its minor uh, misgivings, I think this is a quality firearm. If you ever see one available used, uh, absolutely pick it up. See you later.